What's up everybody, Islam Wurtze Blanca. And if you wanted more challenge from Borderlands 3, they heard you and they're dropping Mayhem Mode 2.0. Mayhem Mode will now boast up to 10 different levels of increasing difficulty that will also have better quality loot as you move up each level. This means your build must be on point if you want to stand a chance in the higher Mayhem levels. If you're a fellow Amara main or plan on trying out this character, I got you covered with my all new OP Amara build. This build is 57 levels of insane DPS and crowd control and a staple for any team. No special weapon required. All you need is a specific class mod, which we'll discuss in a bit. The footage you're watching now is from a Mayhem 4 run through some of the DLC. And as you can see, enemies aren't able to overwhelm us because we're dropping them almost as quickly as they can spawn. And those that we're not dropping right away are just getting caught in my grasp. So without further ado, Here's everything you need to build yourself an Amara that's going to slay her way through Mayhem Mode 2.0. Starting in Fist of the Elements, we're going Anima all five points. The status effect and the status effect duration are going to be very important for Amara because if you're playing Amara and you're doing this build, every single one of your weapons should have some kind of status effect. And the status effects are going to impact the stacks that we're going to want to do coming from the Mystical Assault Tree. Then we're going to go five points in Tempest. Elemental damage, because we're gonna be using nothing but elemental damage, very important, plus 30%, and an additional 20% if we're using shock weapons, so shields are not gonna be a problem for us at all. Then we come down to dread, so our gun damage is going to be increased when we're grasping an enemy. Yes, we will be using the grasp because of how helpful it is in terms of crowd control for mobs, as well as the amount of buffs that we can get from grabbing something. So we're going to go our throw our point in here, but we have four left. So we're going to come back down to steady hands. So increased weapon handling and accuracy, which is going to be uh, very important in terms of making sure that you're hitting those shots. So those buffs actually count. We're going to then add a point onto wildfire when Amara applies a status effect. It spreads to nearby enemies that will then, like I said before, apply to the rush decks that we have going on in the other tree. Every time we apply a status effect, that will be important. So we're gonna go ahead and add one point there just to open up the next line. Then we're gonna come into deep well magazine size. The less we reload, the more bullets we can throw down range. All our weapons are gonna be elemental anyway. So we're going to put deep well on. Then we're gonna go ahead and do a hit indiscriminate, which gives us ricochet when we have something phase grasp, very similar to what you guys may remember to Maya and her phase grasp from Borderlands 2, so we're gonna head and put that on. We have one more point before we get to the next line, so we're just gonna go ahead and rock with Catharsis. This makes enemies explode when they have a status effect and every single thing you shoot or grass should have a status effect at some point, so you're gonna be dealing that elemental damage along with anything else that you have going on with it. There is a short cooldown. It's not the best move, but the best option that we have right now. So we're gonna go ahead and add Catharsis. Here you have to do sustainment. I will admit that the big drawback to this build is you're essentially a glass cannon, so you don't have a lot of healing opportunities. You're not going to be tanking anything. But with sustainment, if you're able to send enough bullets down range and do enough damage, as you should, if you have the right weapons and you do this build properly, you will stay alive. There have been a lot of fights that I have gotten out of alive because I was just dealing enough damage to get that 20% life steal that I desperately needed. So sustainment. All five points, absolute must for this build to help balance it out a little bit because like I said, this is gonna be high damage, high crowd control, but not a ton of survivability if you're not using this perk. Then the last one is going to be forceful expression, bonus elemental damage plus 18%, which is gonna be huge for all the other buffs that we went ahead and added already with the ricochet, it's gonna be huge when it comes to our lifesteal because the more damage we're doing, the more we're gonna be able to stay alive. So that is an absolute must, get the capstone for Fist of the Elements. Then we're coming over to Mystical Assault where we're gonna really finish this out. We're going straight to do harm and we're gonna put all five points in do harm. This will be very important for what I'm gonna show you after we finish this build because there is one item that you're gonna need that's really gonna bring this all together. Don't worry, we're gonna come back to some of the other ones because most of you are like, oh, what about Violent Tempestry? That's how you're gonna get most of your rush tracks. I got you, just give me a second. But do harm, starting off all five points. Then we're gonna come down into Transcend. The accuracy and the critical hit damage is extremely important because again, the more damage you're doing, the better it's gonna be. Don't worry, I know about Restless. We're gonna cap that off 
very soon. We come down to Ascendant, get that action skill augment because that is gonna be huge for what we're gonna be doing in terms of the actual skill itself. Like I said, we're gonna finish off Restless, action skill cooldown, extremely important, especially for a crowd control build because you wanna phase grass as often as possible. And then we're gonna come down and we're putting one point in Violent Tapestry. The only reason why we're putting one point in Violent Tapestry, we're only using this just so we can get the rush tax from giving things status effects. But the actual bonuses from our rush stacks are gonna be very important for do harm because that does action skill damage. So that is why we put five here, one here. Then we're coming down to Wrath. So Mara gets increased gun damage and this is increased after she actually makes her action skill. So again, more damage laid bare, same thing, increased damage from all sources. So even our teammates are gonna be helping out with this one after being damaged by an action skill. Great, we're gonna be using that. Then we're coming down to Awakening, increasing the rush stack effectiveness 30% if you put all three points in there which is going to be huge because rust stacks are a very important piece of this specific build. And then we have a couple points until we get to the capstone. So we're gonna cap off laid bare and then we're gonna add one to from rest, which is giving us improved fire rate and charge time. I love the cutsman, very important for charge time. Fire rate in general, also very important because again, the more shots that you're sending down range is going to be uh, the more damage that you're outputting. And then with deep well, that's just comboing together because you have a larger magazine. That means you're getting more shots in before you actually have to reload. So that opens up the capstone. So this allows Amara to do a second action skill while the original is cooling down. This is going to be huge because if you are desperate for another grasp or something that you need, then you can use it and don't have to worry about your cooldown. This is also increasing our max rush stacks, which is gonna be great because then that's going to be helping with the damage output and everything that we're doing associated with that. And then if we kill an enemy with our action skill, that's refunding rush stacks. Again, rush stacks are very important for this build. They're going to stay extremely high very often with everything that we've done to build this out. But again, a lot of the damage output and a lot of what you're trying to do with this build is dependent upon those rush stacks. So Mystical, Salt's Capstone Avatar is an absolute must. So now we have a couple points left. We're gonna go ahead and cap off our from rest to get that fire rate all the way up. Again, more bullets down range, the better. And then we have one point to spend. Now this one is gonna be completely up to you. I will give you my suggestion. I'll give you a couple more suggestions based on how people like to play in the comments that I've received. I like Alacrity. The other reason why I like Alacrity is because you're getting reload speed for all the rush stacks that you have, and you're getting even more reload speed after you consume those rush stacks. The way this build works is you will be gaining rush stacks and consuming rush stacks constantly. Getting that extra reload speed, and by the way, 25 rush stacks, which is what you should have if you build this correctly, times the 0.4% is giving you a 10% reload speed, which is better than throwing one point in fast hands, which is only giving you a 7% reload speed. You might want to go fast hands if you want the weapon swap speed because you do swap weapons quite often as Amara because of the elements that she uses. But again, I like the additional reload speed. Some people like to add another one of Violent Tapestry, which is fine. I think our effect chance is already good enough. And then some people are uncomfortable with the glass cannon and try to get as much health as they want. So they'll either go for clarity or they'll go for root to rise to gain that max health boost. Those are options to be honest. But as far as this build is concerned, it's all about dealing that damage as fast as possible, taking out that enemy as fast as possible, keeping those crowds under control. That's where this build excels. And then when the bosses show up, the more damage you're able to do, the better you're able to take care of that boss, and the more help you're actually gonna be providing for your team. So what about our actual skill? For our actual skill, we go for fist over matter. Amara will summon a giant fist that bursts, and then go ahead and get your grab, and then after grabbing, she has these fists that smash the area. The reason why we're choosing that one is because that is the only grab skill that actually does damage. Yes, ties that bind damages link enemies that are linked around, but that damage doesn't actually apply to some of these buffs that we're trying to get. A lot of the buffs that you may have noticed only assist after an enemy is damaged by their action skill. For example, laid bare, increased damage after being damaged by the action skill. So that is why we are forced to use fist over matter. This is also very important because we have this buff here where the action skill damage is four and a half percent per stack, which doesn't seem like a lot times 25 still is like eh, but you'll see in a second that is very important. We're also using a lore. We're using a lore because that is a singularity that's gonna pull all the enemies together, which is gonna get them all hit by a fist over matter, which is gonna be dealing a lot of damage to that entire crowd. And again, another reason why we did Ascendant 
is because now that a lower radius is 100 plus percent. So this is the build that I suggest in terms of dealing that damage, taking care of those crowds. There is one very key item that you're gonna need in order to bring this all together. And that is a Phase Zerker class mod. If you have one, great. If you don't, find one. Put that on. Because what this does is when you use your action skill, you automatically get your mash rush stacks. They will decay over time, but every single rush stack that you get, you're gonna have 3% weapon damage, 10% to your action skill cooldown rate, and you're also increasing your rush stacks. So with this, you're gonna have 25 rush stacks because you start with 10, you got 10 more by doing avatar and then you got the extra five with the phase or class mod this is very important because when you enter a fight and you get those mass rush stacks again for every single rush stack you're getting those damage buffs but there's also and i don't know if it's a glitch i don't know if they did it on purpose i'm not going to say anything because i have found this to be extremely overpowered especially when it comes to that crowd control that i'm trying to get through you guys when you activate your action skill okay you get those rush stacks. You can see on the bottom that we're getting those rush stacks and they're starting to decay. But notice how my action skill immediately regen because I didn't grab anything. I didn't waste it like if I was using her ability where she shoots out copies of herself or where she does the ground slam. You get the ability back if you don't grab anything. So if you spam this ability, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, I am constantly gaining violent tapestry, do harm and i'm keeping my movement speed rush stacks okay i'm at a times 99 right now times 99 then when i grab something and i'm doing the damage with do harm and i'm doing the damage with my gun all of that is going to be stacked so if we have action skill damage 5.9 percent per stack you know based on our items in our current build times 99 is going to be a much bigger difference than times 25, which is our max rush tax, which is why this build is so overpowered. So if we come in and we do the math, just for my specific build, actually, matter of fact, let's do 4.5 because 4.5 was the base. If you have five points and do harm, you do 4.5 times 99, you're doing 445.5% extra damage. That means every single time that fist comes down and hits that enemy, you're doing over four times the damage than you normally would because you took two seconds to spam your ability. You can be in the middle of a fight. There have been fights where I'm in the middle of and I'm shooting a boss, ba 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 ba. And then I'm like, oh snap, I want my stacks back. So I'll look away from the boss and then I'll stack it up and then I'll come back and then I'll phase grasp the boss in order to do that damage. You can do that in the middle of a fight. As long as you're not looking at the enemy and you can't grasp them, you're good. You're gonna get those stacks you're gonna get all those damage buffs. Not to mention all the buffs that we're getting to our damage, such as all the elemental damage that we're doing, such as the gun damage that we're getting after we grasp the target, which is gonna combine with the gun damage that we're getting just in general, times the extra damage that a target is doing after it gets damaged by our action skill, times our fire rate, times our crit rate, times the fact that we're gonna be grabbing them over and over and over again because we have the low cooldown with Restless times the extra bonus we're getting with our awakening. So even those 99 rush stacks are getting 30% extra effectiveness because we built this build the way we built it. Again, guys, this is the ultimate build that you want to have in OP Amara. OP Amara, it's going to annihilate every single crowd. Finally, an Amara that is viable against bosses because you're gonna be actually doing a decent amount of damage with your skill, but Beyond that, you're doing a bunch of damage with your guns because you have all of the Fist of the Elements buffs paired with the Mystical Assault. Amara needed to be level 57 right off the get because before she was just crowd control. Now she can actually fend for herself and just annihilate a whole room. That is everything you need to build an Amara that will be able to take on Mayhem 2.0. Have your own favorite build? Any character synergies you like with Amara? Drop a comment, let me know, let's talk about it. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Make sure you turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. I'll be grinding out Mayhem Mode 2.0 until I get all that sweet special legendary loot. If you want to join me, you can catch the La Muerte Blanca live stream on Mixer and Twitch. All of the links along with a full breakdown of this class's buffs can be found in the description below. I'm La Muerte Blanca. I'll catch you guys next time.